Eagles coming off the win over Pittsburgh against the 2-1 Houston Oilers. Houston won the toss. They will receive the deep men, a rookie out of Texas A&M, number 85, Carl Rogers, and Jeff Bruce, number 81. The kick from Sunter, and it's picked off by one of the up men, bringing across the 30-yard line, Mike Bobber. The tight end who has been off to a sensational start well, with new quarterback Ken Stabler on the short return. As we look at the Houston Oilers backfield, Ken Stabler, who has been red hot, he is connected on his last eight passes. Tim Wilson and Rob Cart starting at running back with Earl Campbell sitting it out because of that pulled groin muscle. Excellent receivers. Billy White Shoes Johnson very much back after the severe D operations and an outstanding offensive line. Leon Gray has been the key man at left tackle, eight-year pro out of Jackson State. And Stable will throw on first down, and he completes. Billy Johnson stopped by the right quarterback, Ken Riley, the 12-year pro out of Florida A&M. And looking at that Cincinnati defensive unit, they go out of the 3-4 with Edwards, Whitley, and Browner. Browner having an excellent season, a bounce back year. The linebackers, Dinkle, LeClaire, Cameron, and Williams. The deep men, O'Reilly and Griffin, and Wright and Jerome. First down for the Oilers. This is Carpenter. Could not turn the corner. Rob Carpenter coming off a tremendous day last week against the Baltimore Colts, 140, 14 yards on the ground. Combination of Bo Harris, outside linebacker, and the inside man, number 55, Jim LeClaire, making the stop, advance of one, a second and nine for Houston at their 48-yard line. Houston Oilers lost the opener in Pittsburgh, 31-17, one in Cleveland on a Monday night, 16-7, controlling the football, an amazing 42 minutes. This is Carpenter again, just a short pickup. Well, we talk on NFL 80 about that improved Cincinnati defensive unit. They were dead last in the AFC last year, and they are number three this season. Cincinnati defense that time really defense the point of attack, and Rob Carpenter tried to cut back on the flow, but they were really there. That's one advantage that the 34 really gives you, Marv. It gives you a lot of players to the play. It is a third and seven out of midfield, and Cincinnati to a 4-3. Stabler loses the football. We'll have to see if the play was uh, whistled dead and was. So Stabler was sacked by Eddie Edwards, a four-year veteran out of Miami of Florida. And the hand for the Cincinnati Bengal defensive unit. They got great penetration that time. Eddie Edwards coming from the outside just drove his man deep. See Browner here just driving Leon Gray straight back, and Leon never got a chance to set up. There's Eddie Edwards just coming, just drove his man also straight back. Kenny Stabler had nowhere to go with it. With Parsley, who is known as a directional punter, will try to do just that. That is Cleotha Montgomery as the deep man. He is the brother of a Philadelphia Eagles running star, Wilbert Montgomery. Good hang time by Parsley. And Montgomery lets it fly by. Takes a Houston hop and is down. What a place to start off on offense. Two-yard line. 48-yard punt by that man, number 18, Cliff Parsley. And Jeff Roof, second-year man out of Bowling Green, able to put it down at the one, but a penalty marker on the field. And the officials talk it over. The referee today has been bright. The umpire... Bob Boylston, the headlines for us, Dale Williams, the line judge, Bill Reynolds, the back judge, Stan Jabby, side judge is Ed Ward, and the field judge, Pat Millett. Holding indicated by Tom Dinkle of the uh, Cincinnati Bengals, just trying to lend a hand to the officials. Before the kick. A holding penalty called on Houston before... The punt, there he is, number 52, the man who did the holding, Robert Brazil. He's trying to keep his man from going downfield. Of course, he gets set up to return. Uh, he's trying to get downfield in a hurry. This is really a, a rough time right now for the, uh, for the Houston Oilers because they had a great field position. They had him inside the five-yard line. So this is, could be a great break for Cincinnati. 
Receivers back out to 20 yard line. So it's a do over for Cliff Parsley who has that 48 yard punt erased. Again Montgomery the deep man and again good hang time. And Montgomery calls for the fair catch at the 12. And that's where the Bengals will go to the offense for the first time today. Another good punt by Parsley, 46 yards. And we'll be back with the Cincinnati offensive thrust after this. Cincinnati head coach Forrest Gregg, who last week was presented with the game ball for his first ever Cincinnati victory, taking over the club this season and looking to turn it around from two consecutive four and 12 years. Jack Thompson, the throwing Samoan, is the quarterback, the running backs, Charles Alexander, who gets the call, and Pete Johnson. Archie Griffin not starting. He is a question mark for today because of a combination of tendonitis uh, in his ankle and bruised ribs. Arch Springer, the left side inside linebacker, making the stop. Here we see Anthony Munoz, the number one draft choice, getting into Elvin Bethay. Stands him up and gets a good block there. Old Elvin's going to have his hands full today. Three yard pick up here, second and first down for the Cincinnati Bengals. Arch Springer making the stop on the play as Jack Thompson able to connect with the tight end, Dan Ross on his first passing attempt. Archie Griffin, Pete Johnson are the running backs. And the receivers, Isaac Curtis, a true game breaker along with Bass and Ross. And there's that offensive line with Munoz, the man who has been uh, talked about right throughout the early portion of the uh, NFL schedule. Certainly a leading candidate for AFC Rookie of the Year honors. Face mask penalty indicated now against the Cincinnati Bengals. Compounds the problems that the Cincinnati Bengals are going to have here. They're deep in their own territory. A definite passing down, and here come the Oilers. So the ball is placed back at the 11. It's a second down and 16 for Cincinnati. An unusual face mask penalty picked up by the offense. Thompson. Try to make the turn, but good not. And that play was designed for the quarterback, Jack Thompson, but Greg Bingham was there, able to diagnose it perfectly. Jack Thompson that time just tucked the ball under his arm. There was no idea to pass on that. Houston, of course, out of the 3-4, uh, and Ken Kennard starting in place of Curly Cope at middle guard. Excellent group of linebackers, Washington, Stringer, Bingham, and Brazil. J.C. Wilson and Greg Stembrick in the corners. Mike Reinfeld, who led the National Football League with 12 interceptions a year ago. And Vernon Perry, who had a tremendous uh, rookie season. It's a third and 15, back at the seventh. This is Pete Johnson looking to get the Bengals out of the hole, out to the 11. Kennard, number 71 there to make the stop. And so the Bengals will be forced to punt. That's probably one of the best calls you can make in that position, Marv. You know they're really coming after you. You've got a chance to break it out to the secondary because they're trying to get deep. If he had broke through the first uh, set of line, he might have gone a long way. All right, Pat McAnally will punt from his end zone. And he's averaging 41 and a half. Carl Roaches back in single safety. Roaches, a rookie out of Texas A&M. We are early minutes from Riverfront in Cincinnati. No score between the Bengals and the Oilers. Down through the years, Cincinnati has always played Houston very tough, although Houston has won five of the last six. Good kick by McAnally. Here is Roaches. And Roaches gets out to midfield. Carl Roaches. The oldest rookie in the NFL at 26 years of age. And we'll be back with... So, Ken Stabler is down nine for his last 11. This drive starting at the 50-yard line. The running backs are Tim Wilson and Rob Coppinger. And Wilson picks up short yardage on the play. Tim Wilson, play. one of the outstanding blocking backs in the game last week. Came on, rushed for 85 yards against the Baltimore Colts. On that play, Wilson Whitley actually overplayed the play. He hit into his nose man really well, controlled him. Carl Mock is the 75 is Whitley. He controls him really well in the back cut behind him. That's just an excellent play. 
picked up two on the play. It is a second and eight at the Cincinnati 48-yard line as they line up at the eye. Rob Carpenter stopped by Bo Harris along with Reggie Williams, the outside linebackers. And the Cincinnati uh, defensive unit continues to do the job. Giant Stadium at the Meadowlands. The Los Angeles Rams in front of the New York Giants, 7-0. One-yard run by Elvis Peacock. They are early first quarter. One-yard advance, third and seven. At the 47. And State with a throw. And he's got the first down. Out of the backfield, Ronnie Coleman. Stopped by the free safety, Dick Gerard. I don't know if you saw the pressure that was put on Stabler in that situation, but the strong safety came on a late blitz. Stabler saw him and just stayed right in that pocket. That's what he does so well. Ronnie Coleman, an outstanding pass receiver, has picked it up just inside the 40-yard line. So a first and 10 for Houston. Eight minutes and 50 seconds left in this first quarter. Stabler has completed 71% of his passes coming into today. Going the running route and a fumble by Wilson. And it's recovered by the Bengals. The rookie strong safety, Greg Wright, on the recovery. Tim Wilson coughing it up. Greg Wright is getting an awful lot of claim here in Cincinnati. He was a late round draft choice for Moorhead State. He's really come on to play great football. We can see him here. He's cheating up on the line. He's shooting the line right here. The fumble's made right there. He's alert, dives on the ball, and it gives a great field position for the Cincinnati Bengals. Well, the Cincinnati Bengals were all over the football last week with Pittsburgh fumbling four times, and the Bengals taking advantage. And let's see what they can do right here. First and 10 at their 44-yard line. The fullback, Pete Johnson, out near midfield. And Ken Kennard, the middle guard, with the wraps around Johnson. There is number 47, Greg Bright, who has had an exceptional start in this his rookie season. Five-yard pickup for Johnson. It is a second and five at the 49. Don Bass out to the left. Isaac Curtis to the right. The tight end is Dan Ross. And it's Johnson again. One yard advance. Ken Kennard filling in for Curly Culp has really got his hands filled in there. Number 71. We can see him here on Blair Bush. Comes off the ball trying to control. Get to the side of the play where the action is. Makes a good play. He's got to read that right off the ball, Marvin. That's a tough thing to do. He's got not only control the center, but he's got to read the flow of which side the back is going to. And Dave, we're told there's nothing wrong physically with Curly Culp. Bum Phillips just decided to make a change, so Kennard, four-year veteran out of Angelo State, has uh, drawn the assignment. Third down and four. And Thompson unleashes for the first down and more. Charles Alexander coming out of the backfield and picks it up. Jack Tatum in as the nickel back with the stop on Alexander. It's a first down for Cincinnati at the Houston 40-yard line. You see who he was hit by, Jack Tatum, the one-time Oakland Raider, number 28 now. Is he as mean? As he looks real mean, persist? but really he's a nice fellow when you really get to know him. He's, he's a super nice fellow. All right, first down at the 40. And this is Alexander again. Alexander with a good second effort, but loses on the play. I was watching Blair Bush that time again on Ken Kennard, and Blair Bush really drove Ken Kennard off the ball. As Kennard was trying to make his move strong side to go with the action, Blair Bush kept his legs going and actually drove Ken Kennard, cut him off, and knocked him on the ground. That's an excellent job for a center. And a three-yard loss for a second and 13 for the Bengals. And Thompson completes to Pete Johnson but just does get back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Covered up by Greg Bingham, number 54, on the right side inside linebacker. Well, they spot it at the 39. So it'll be a third and nine upcoming for the Bengals. 
We've got a picture of Curly Culp standing over there. I know he's not happy standing on a sideline. He's a great competitor in his 13th year from Arizona State. Just a great competitor. He's played tremendous football for an awful number, uh, awful lot of years. And over the years, considered as one of the uh, strongest men in the National Football League. Cincinnati goes three wide receivers, third and nine. And Thompson with good protection, able to swing it. This is Johnson, but he's short of the first down. Well, we'll have to see where they mark it. He might have gotten it, Marv. Yes, apparently uh, right at the yard line marker, it is a first down. Jack Thompson there sees 46, Pete Johnson coming out of the backfield. Now Pete sees that flag as he's coming upfield, lowers his shoulder trying to get to the flag. Could have had a face mask penalty on that play. Well, Jack Thompson has done very well once again. Last Sunday came on for Ken Anderson and hit 9 of 18 for 122 yards. Anderson going out again with that left knee injury. Thompson has a first down at the Houston 29 with scoreless first period. This time the handoff to Johnson. Able to unravel through that left side. And Pete Johnson, the five-year man out of Ohio State, Running very well here in this first quarter. Stopped by the weak safety, Mike Reinfeld. Cincinnati is in this situation trying to hit where the holes are in the 34 defense. The most vulnerable positions are over both guards. If you can get the center man to move either direction, you've got a natural hole to come on. And that's what Cincinnati is attacking. It is a second and four off the six-yard pickup at the Houston 23. People have been talking about the ball control of the Oilers while the Bengals controlling the football here in the first quarter. And again, it's Johnson. Beautiful fake by the quarterback, Jack Thompson. Robert Brazil able to make the stop and a first down picked up by Johnson once again. Here's Robert Brazil, number 52. He's actually pushed back, but he does get into the play, but really in a, that's consequential right there. It really doesn't make that much difference. Pete Johnson's quite a load coming off the ball. He's short from Ohio State, got a lot of weight, and they really got the they really got the Houston Oilers really falling backwards. Isaac Curtis is out to the left side. Don Bass to the right. Running backs Alexander and Johnson. And it's Johnson again inside the 15-yard line. Cincinnati continues to do this. They're going to demoralize the Houston Oilers. I don't know whether they're running at them in any one particular place, but they are demoralizing as they're just driving the ball down the field. Greg Bingham making the stop as Bum Phillips uh, looks on, and he is looking at a defensive unit and the Houston Oilers that is spending more time on the field than uh, they have become accustomed to uh, this season. Second and five at the 13-yard line. Three minutes, 20 seconds, remaining in the smallest first quarter. This time, Alexander for just a couple. Charles Alexander was submarined by the combination of Bingham and Stringer. Here comes the situation, third down and five yards, a young quarterback, Jack Thompson. Fortunately, his plays are coming in from the bench, and he doesn't have to call them. But the wily old veteran of Ken Stabler would have a great play on this, I'll tell you right now. Well, Thompson has... A third and four as you look at Ken Anderson, who did practice all week with a brace over to that twisted left knee. Thompson is making only his second start. And Thompson completes for the touchdown. Ron Bass with a beautifully executed play. The Bengals lead it six to nothing. Excellent pass. Thrown in, he was covered well, but Bass really came up with just a fine hit reception. The ball was right on his fingertips. It couldn't have been a better thrown ball. I don't care if he had been a 15-year veteran. There's Thompson dropping back. He sees a little bit of pressure, but right there is the ball right exactly where he wanted to throw it. Don Bass, a three-year man out of the University of Houston with his third touchdown reception, beating Greg Stemrick. And now here is Ian Sunter. But I got it right through. So with two minutes and 37 seconds remaining in this first quarter, the Cincinnati Bengals with a sustained drive take a 7-0 lead on the Houston Oilers. Jack 
Thompson, four for four, leading the Cincinnati Bengals to the touchdown, completing the 12-yard pass, and here's the kickoff from Sunker. This is Jeff Ruth, second-year man out of Bowling Green. And Groth out to the 30. Penalty marker is down as Groth is run out of bounds by Ray Griffin. But a flag is down. It's almost always a bad flag in that situation because it's most likely on the receiving team. A clip or a hold. Dave, we were talking about the ball control as you see the holding indication against Houston. The Bengals utilizing 6-0-1 in this first quarter to go 11 plays for 56 yards and take a 7-0 lead. That really helps out your defense also, Marv, because they're not on the field. Holding number 88 on the return. It's Rich Caster, the backup tight end. And that is not a happy bump Phillips that you just saw on the sideline. With his Oilers trailing by the score, 7-0, and they go first and 10 at the 16. The Detroit Lions leading Minnesota, 7-0. Danielson hitting David Hill on a three-yard pass play. They are in the first quarter. All right, Stabler on the play action, going sideline, and completes for the first down and more. Ken Stabler. Combining with Rich Caster, Ken Riley, number 13, the right cornerback, uh, making the stop. C. Staber stops back here and sets up, and he's got Caster wide open. He's just got to loft the ball a little bit to Richard Caster. Makes a fine catch for 88. He's out of bounds, and they're out of trouble also, Marv. They're out around the, almost the 40-yard line, whereas before they were deep in their territory. Chicago Bears leading the Pittsburgh Steelers 3-0. Pittsburgh losing last week to the Cincinnati Bengals. Tampa Bay in front of Cleveland. Out of Tampa Bay with Sam Nover and Bob Crumpy on hand for NBC. Again, Stabler goes sideline and again able to complete it out of the 45-yard line. Mike Renfro, the wide receiver, stopped by the combination of Glenn Cameron and Ray Griffin. Stabler's not getting any pressure. He's just a little fade play action there. Renfro is wide open. I think I... I probably could have caught that one. Well, Dave, let's not get crazy now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see there's no one around Renfro. He just does a short curl. He's got his hands up saying, hey, throw me it. And Stabler puts it right there. Stabler's favorite receiver in contrast to the days of Dan Pastorini has been the tight end Mike Bobber. So we'll look for him to go that way uh, shortly. Here's Coppinger with just a short pickup. I noticed one thing about the Houston Oilers, and that's that they haven't changed their running plan. They still are running the same plays that they run with with or without Earl Campbell. And Rob Carpenter certainly has picked it up for, for the missing Earl Campbell. Last week against Baltimore when Campbell went out, and Wilson and Carpenter came on, and Wilson particularly did very well, the Baltimore Colts said, well, we weren't prepared to face a club that uh, would rely on the running game of Tim Wilson. Which makes me wonder, uh, why aren't they prepared for that? Because Campbell is a guy who obviously can get hurt well with all the time he carries the ball. Here's Carpenter. And he has picked up the first down. Reggie Williams, outside linebacker on the right, number 57, stopping that man, number 26, the four-year pro out of Miami of Ohio, Rob Carpenter. Buffalo in front of Oakland by the score of 7-0. That could be a shootout as the afternoon progresses. And as we mentioned, Detroit leads Minnesota. Touchdown pass by Danielson. Right here, only 25 seconds left in the first quarter. And the Bengals lead at 7-0. Houston first down at midfield. Stabler off the fake. Again, it's Renfro who took a hard pop from the left cornerback, Ray Griffin, who, of course, is the brother of the injured Archie Griffin, Ray, a three-year veteran out of Ohio State. This is going to bring up a second and one situation, the prime situation for Kenny Stabler. As far as comparing a team preparing for Earl Campbell, you so prepared, the defense so prepared for Earl Campbell, it's just hard not to not to utilize him and not to just key on him. All right, first quarter has come to a close with the score, Cincinnati 7 and Houston nothing. Oh, with former Oakland Raider Dave Rowe, this is Marv Albert as we look at Earl Campbell, who is called a question mark, although he may see some action later on. Bum Phillips had said, well, if we really need him. Right now, the Oilers are down by the score of 7-0 off the play action on second and two. 
Stabler picks up the first down by completing to the fullback, Jim Wilson. Marvis. Right, the strong safety, running Wilson out of bounds. Marv, as we had said earlier, anytime a defensive team prepares the way you have to against Earl Campbell, it's quite a psychological letdown when he doesn't play, as it was last week for the Baltimore Colts. And there is Earl, who ran the ball only 11 times last week against Pittsburgh. I'd like to have him just on my sideline. <laughs> can be an imposing, intimidating figure. Stabler is now seven for eight. Wilson goes nowhere. And that Cincinnati defensive unit continues to look sharp. Number 57, Reggie Williams. Outside linebacker on the right with the hard hit. Williams, a five-year veteran out of Dartmouth. Up front, Edwards, Whitley, Browner. The linebackers, Williams, Cameron, LeClaire, Harris. Griffin, Riley, Bright, and Jerron are the deep men. It is a second and ten for Houston at the 38-yard line. White shoes Johnson out to the left side, and they are packed in tight. Wilson and Copper to the running backs, and as you can see, lots of movement. And penalty markers all over the field. against Houston. They were coming up in a three-point stance, and whether Stapler was going to go on a quick count, I don't know. But as he's sitting in a three-point stance, the defense yells out something, and all of a sudden they just jump up. Look to be the left tackle, Leon Gray, and the left guard, Bob Young, who is in a starting role instead of David Carter. It'll be a second and 15 back at the 38. Got their four man rush now, four down linemen. And Stable looked to throw it short, got it down by Ross Browner, number 79. And a hand for Browner. Stable was looking to hit the safety valve, Tim Wilson. But Browner, who goes 6'3, 261, and who has played exceptionally well, looking to bounce back from a disappointing year. Getting a piece of it, and it is now a third and 15 for the Oilers. Certainly puts the pressure on Kenny Stabler in this position. Last week, only one of Stabler's passes was not caught. He completed 18, two were intercepted, so only one hit the ground. Here's the third and 15. Again a swing. It's Carpenter to the 40. And no more. Williams getting the wraps around Rob Carpenter and again the Bengals stop the Houston Oilers. Trying to cut down on that pressure that time. They dropped the ball off with Carl Mock and a couple of linemen trying to get out in front of them. But Cincinnati was not fooled on that play. Tremendous series for number 57, the outside linebacker Reggie Williams. And Cliff Parsley. Well, kick away, Forrest Gregg, head coach of Cincinnati, has to be happy with developments thus far. Cleotha Montgomery, the rookie out of Abilene Christian, is the deep man. And a directional punt by Parsley, but it carries uh, too far, and it will be first and ten at the 20-yard line, but a penalty marker was thrown down. So we'll see what the call is. 40-yard punt by Parsley. Ineligible downfield. on a kicking team, number 57, declined the penalty, first down on a 20-yard line. 57, John Corker, backup linebacker. The man assessed the penalty, and when we resume, Cincinnati will take over. The Houston Oilers have changed their middle guard from Ken Kennard back to Curly Culp. And it's a first down and 10 from the 20-yard line. This is Pete Johnson, who has run so well. He's knocking people over as he crosses the 30-yard line. And a first down. What a first half it's been for Pete Johnson, who goes six feet, about 250 pounds. And he is a running back. He is a real load when he comes out there. You can see the thighs he's got as he makes some of the moves. He's just a big running back. And you can see that time when, it, when the defensive back came up and hit him. He was in for a jolt. 
picked up 12 yards, so Pete Johnson now has got 39 yards on seven carries. Nathan Poole, number 35, has come on, replacing Charles Alexander in that Cincinnati backfield. Pulled a second-year man out of Louisville and gets the call, but goes nowhere. Loss on the play. Right now, let's go to NFL 80 and Brian Gumbel in New York. Thank you, Marv Albert. At Buffalo's Rick Stadium, the Bills have taken a 14-0 lead from the one-yard line. Joe Cribbs takes it in. Buffalo in the second quarter out in front of Oakland, 14-0. They're trying to go 4-0. Let's go back to Cincinnati. Thank you, Brian. Second and 10, and Thompson bump from behind goes incomplete, intended for Nathan Poole. Poole is only 5'8", 205 pounds. You're looking at Ted Washington, the outside linebacker. On the left side, involved in the coverage. It is a third and ten now for the Cincinnati Bengals. So Jack Thompson, the throw in Samoan, is now four for five for 36 yards. The Houston Oilers have got to get more pressure on Jack Thompson. As it was evidenced in that first quarter when he threw that perfect touchdown pass, he's going to hit their receiver so they don't get pressure on him. It is a third and ten at the 31-yard line. Thompson in trouble, able to get it off. Johnson out of the backfield, but short of the first down. He continues to knock people over. J.C. Wilson, the left quarterback, was able to trip him up. And so the Bengal drive has been stopped. And they will punt. Pat McAnally will come on for the second time this afternoon. Jack Thompson that time was under a lot of pressure, but boy, he really held in there well. Dumped the ball off to Pete Johnson, who made a nice run. But that really showed me something on that series. Here's Carl Roaches, rookie out of Texas A&M. Had a tryout several years ago with Kansas City. Played briefly in Canada. Signed as a free agent at the age of 26 by Bum Phillips, the oldest rookie in the National Football League. And a good punt by McAnally. Here is Rochus out to the 15. And looking very gingerly at what he saw coming at him. A 51-yard punt by that man, Pat McAnally. And the Houston Oilers will take over after this timeout. Houston from their 11-yard line. Bengals lead 7-0 on the reverse. Billy White shoes looking for running room out to the 20. And he created on that play. He had nowhere to go. White Shoes Johnson coming around on the reverse and was stopped by the combination of Bo Harris and Ray Griffin. Pick up a five. It'll be second and five of the 21. Buffalo now leading Oakland 14-0. Minnesota and Detroit tied at se uh, seven in the second quarter. Pittsburgh now in front of Chicago. 10-3 after that early bear field goal. And Tampa Bay over Cleveland 6-0. Play action by Stabler, but overthrows intended for Johnson. Billy Johnson, the intended receiver. Ken Riley, Ray Griffin on the coverage. And that'll set up a third down. At about six, double zero, Ken Burrow, who is on the sidelines, injured player. And a guy that uh, Stabler certainly misses, New Orleans, leading Miami, 3 nothing in the second. And the Giants now trail the Los Angeles Rams 14-0 in the second quarter at Giant Stadium. There's a third and six for Stabler, who has been handcuffed thus far. Unleashes, and it is caught! Tremendous concentration by Ronnie Coleman off the deflect. But wait a moment. The ball was picked off by the Bengals, stripping Coleman. Glenn Cameron involved. Cameron and LeClaire all over Coleman, who was able to play the deflect, and they lost it. Stabler had a lot of time on that play. As he set back there, he had, a lot, he had a lot of time to pass that ball. You can see him taking the snap back here. He wasn't getting a lot of pressure, just they were well covered. He ends up throwing the ball out here, and really it should have been intercepted right there. It was a tremendous catch right there. But then to give it right back up, I think he just got the ball stripped out. Mm -hmm. He did. He was fumbling it, and I think Jim LeClaire came up with the ball. It is LeClaire coming up with that loose football. You know.
last week in the upset win over Pittsburgh. The Bengals converted six Pittsburgh turnovers into 20 points. And another turnover here by Houston. So Jack Thompson takes over. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. And he's looking to go long on first down, but overthrows way downfield. Intended for Isaac Curtis in a foot race with J.C. Wilson. There is Isaac in his eighth year out of San Diego State. Really the key to the uh, Cincinnati offense because he is a true game breaker. We've talked a lot about Anthony Munoz being the number one draft choice. That time he was sure happy that he had Dave Lappin playing next to him because he picked up. Munoz here is getting beat by one of the great pros, 65 Elton Bethay. You see him getting beat inside and Lappin was right there or Jack Thompson would have had a real welcome. <laughs> Second and 10 at the 45-yard line of Houston. Nine and a half remaining in this first half, and the Bengals lead it by the score of 7 nothing. Now Curtis is out to the right side, and Thompson to throw again. He's got Curtis. Isaac Curtis stopped at the 37-yard line. And it's Robert Brazil, six-year man out of Jackson State, making the tackle. Going to bring up third down and one. Isaac Curtis could have turned up field, but in his efforts to get a little bit more yardage, gave off a couple yards trying to get around the corner to get more substantial yardage. So he gave up the first down, bringing up a third down and one situation. There you see Isaac Curtis only nine yards away from reaching a 5,000-yard milestone. He's usually a slow starter. Didn't come out with a big game last week. Third about one and a half. And Pete Johnson with a typical Pete Johnson move. Looked like he picked it up. Big thing up. Hit on the uh, stump. Johnson took a hard hit and kept going. Johnson that time took a, a whale of a shot from Greg Bingham, and, but still made the first down. I think if, he, if Bingham had followed through, he wouldn't have made it. And we just received the indication it is a first down for Cincinnati off this. Here's Bingham fill into the hole 54, and he hits Johnson, but you can see Johnson slides off and gets the first down, and he didn't make it by very much. It is a first down for Cincinnati at the Houston 34-yard line. The Bengals come in at one up and two down, lost at home to Tampa Bay, lost in Miami in a wild finish in which uh, the Dolphins came from behind, and last week here upset Pittsburgh 30 to 28. Thompson throwing to the right. And a great catch by the tight end, Dan Walsh. A first down and much more inside the 15-yard line. Ross beating the outside linebacker, Ted Washington. Dan Ross made a fantastic catch, a one-hand catch. See Thompson here sets up a little play action to Pete Johnson. Throws the ball out here. Now look at Ross. We have one hand out here. Catches the ball. Excellent concentration, great hands. I'll tell you, he's quite a player. Second year only from Northeastern. Great hands or lots of stick em or a combination. The old Freddie Belitnikoff tree sap. <laughs> it's a 21-yard pickup. First out at the 13-yard line, Charles Alexander to the 11. That'll set up a second and eight. Art Stringer inside linebacker on the left making the stop. You know, as we look at the Cincinnati offense, their line is very, very young in second, third, and uh, fifth year. So they, they're gaining an awful lot of confidence by handling a team such as the Houston Oilers who are highly touted on defense. At the tackles, Anthony Munoz, Mike Wilson at the guards, Glenn Buchnock, Max Mantoya. The center is Blair Bush, and they have been doing the job. It is a second and eight at the 11. Here's Johnson on a trap, picked up a couple. Pete Johnson, a powerful one at runner with good speed for a big man. Stopped by the combination of Curly Culp and Mike Stensrud. Ball is placed inside the nine. And it's a third at about five coming up. Thompson, incidentally, Dave, is uh, now seven for nine for 72 yards. He has had an excellent first half. More important than that is uh, Cincinnati has controlled the ball, something that Houston has been able to do in all their previous games. They controlled it for six minutes in the first half, leading to the touchdown drive, and now the Bengals want to talk it over with 6.37. Remaining in the first half, and Jack Thompson's Bengals leading it 7-0.
coming off the upset of Pittsburgh last week. They lead Houston 7 0. 12 yard pass play. Thompson and Bass making it 7 0. Late first quarter. Ronnie Coleman off a pass reception from Ken Stabler. Coughing it up. The recovery made by Jim LeClaire. And right now, third and five for the Bengals down at the nine yard line. That's Curtis in motion. Off the play action. Thompson in trouble. Able to get it away and throws it out of the end zone. That was a very dangerous pass that time Jack Thompson threw. M.L. Harris coming out of tight end delay, cut across the field and looked open, and if Jack Thompson hadn't been pressured so much, he might have had a chance to throw it to him, but he got extreme pressure. You can see there M.L. Harris coming across, and he's open. Elvin Bethay putting the pressure on Thompson, and now a field goal attempt upcoming from the 16-yard line, so it's a 26-yard attempt for Ian Sunter, who is four for seven on the season. And Sutter puts it right through from 26 yards out. So he is a hot man. He missed early last week against Pittsburgh. Came through with the game winner with two and a half minutes to go. And right now, the Bengals surprisingly in front of the Houston Oilers, 10 to nothing. All right, Brian, far as Greg looking to put an end to the recent success of Bum Phillips over his Cincinnati Bengals, this is Jeff Groth on the kickoff return out to the 30-yard line. Hit down by Dick Jaron. And so the Oilers will go to work with 6-19 remaining in this first half. Well, NBC brought it to television first. The spectacular plays, the memorable moments, and the World Series is back where it belongs beginning October 14th in prime time. Next week, Philadelphia and Montreal and Houston and Los Angeles. As those pennant races go right down the stretch. What a series this weekend in Philadelphia. And, of course, the Astros and the Dodgers battling it out of the National League West. All right here on NBC. First down at the 30 for Stabler. And he completes it. Billy Johnson out uh, to the 40-yard uh, line with first down territory. Glenn Cameron, Jim LeClaire combining to make the stop. Oddly, uh, Dave, Stabler today has not gone for the tight end. Mike Barber perhaps expecting that uh, the Bengals are looking for that. Uh, Bobber had been his favorite receiver. He's caught 14 for 173 yards. Well, evidently, Cincinnati is defensing him because he is such a prime target. Well, they spotted it at the 39, so it's uh, short a yard. Second and one for Stabler. And he's able to complete for the first down. And yes, Mike Bobber with his first reception of the day. Jim LeClaire, the inside linebacker on the left, making the stop. We're not calling plays up here. <laughs> I was wondering whether Kenny, the snake stabler, has a little microphone down there. He could hear us because he hadn't gone to Barber yet. Barber was wide open on a little curl pattern there. You see Barber, 86, coming off the line, drives Jim LeClaire deep and comes back for the ball. That's something that Stabler had great success with in the Oakland uh, days. There is Bobber lighting up. Stabler with time, this time for the running back, Carpenter. And the Oilers look to be opening it up. Rob Carpenter picking up the first down. Greg Bright, rookie, strong safety, making the stop. On this series here, you certainly think that the Oilers are, I mean, yes, the Oilers are getting more momentum. They've got to open up. They're 10 points down, and Stabler's a master of it. 17-yard pass play, and a first down for Houston at the Cincinnati 33-yard line. Four and a half left first half, and the Bengals lead it by the score of 10-0. They go slot left, Renfro in the slot. Stabler goes short again for Carpenter to the 30-yard line, inside the 30. Rob Carpenter, the four-year veteran out of Miami of Ohio, last week, 114 yards rushing, and it was the first Houston Oiler to pick up 100 yards since the addition of Earl Campbell to the ball club. You get the idea there may not be enough plays to uh, distribute when you have a running back of the caliber of uh, Campbell. Second and six for Houston at the 29-yard line. There you see the impressive uh, Stabler stats, 12 out of 15. And Stabler completes to Renfro for another first down. Mike Renfro has been a primary target here this afternoon. Ray Griffin 
making the stop. We've talked, a, we've talked a lot about Ross Browner coming off the ball. An excellent football player for Cincinnati. Here, Leon Gray has got great control on him. You don't see Browner not even bothering Stabler. Leon Gray's got him stood up. Leon Gray, of course, came out of New England was that, with that tandem with John Hanna. They were very successful there, and I'm sure they missed him in New England. One of the great linemen of the game, Leon Gray, 13-yard advance, and it's a first down at the 16. Here's Tim Wilson trying the left side. Slow down and haul down. So Wilson not able to make the turn. Ross Browner on the stop. Edwards, Whitley, and Browner up front in the 3-4. Harris, LeClaire, Cameron, and Williams are the linebackers. The deep batter, Griffin, Riley, Jerron, and Bright. Right here, let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KPRC-TV, Channel 2, Houston. Marv Albert, Dave Rowe from Cincinnati. The Bengals lead the Oilers 10-0. Houston, though, on the move, second and nine. Down at the 15-yard line, and Stabler with a penalty flag down as Renfro was hammered in the corner by Ray Griffin. I think Ray Griffin was guarding a little bit too close that time on Mike Renfro as he made his out pattern. Griffin was right there bumping him. Contact, number 44. That's an automatic first down. So Ray Griffin is called for that illegal contact and it will be first down for Houston at the Cincinnati 11. We talked a lot about the Cincinnati line but yeah, Houston Oilers has got a great line too anchored by Carl Mock a 12 year veteran out of Southern Illinois who plays with tremendous amount of heart. White Sears Johnson out to the left and Renfro in the slot. Carpenter stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Len Cameron, the right inside linebacker, combining with the outside man, Bo Harris. And we are approaching the two-minute mark. Here it is. So the two-minute warning has been provided, and we'll be back here at Riverfront in Cincinnati in just a moment. Of course, we are still very early. Two minutes left, first half. Houston trailing by the score of 10-0, and Stabler has a second and eight down at the nine-yard line. Carpenter, right near the goal line. Dick Jerron, the free safety, the outside linebacker, Reggie Williams, able to stop Carpenter as that ball is placed at the one. Rob Carpenter, number 26, comes on a flare pattern out, what we call a flare pattern, where he just runs straight out. Stabler doesn't look at anyone else. He sees Carpenter's got his linebacker beat, and he drops it to him. Carpenter just dives upfield. It's going to bring down a very interesting situation here because it's either going to be first down and goal to go, which it is, so it doesn't bring up the situation, but it's going to give them three chances to run the ball in there. Again, this is where Earl Campbell is just devastating. Bum Phillips sending in a first-year running back out of Texas A&M, Andrew Armstrong, number 39. He will pack them up now in this first and goal from the one. It's Armstrong, Carpenter, and Wilson. That's Armstrong peeling off. And it's recovered by the Cincinnati Bengals. Confusion on that handoff. Eddie Edwards, number 73, recovering the fumble by Tim Wilson. What a play to juice up the old Cincinnati Bengals. Their defense came up with the ball, but there is a penalty flag down, which may change the situation. Could have been offsides. You can see Stabler here. He just messes up the handoff. The ball's just laying out there. No one can get to it. The flag is going to give the ball back to the Houston Oilers, and what a break for them. I was watching Kenny Stabler's action when the fumble was there and very little emotion shown. He just has complete control all the time of the game. They line up the same way as first and goal at the one. This time Wilson peeling off. Ronnie Coleman walks it in. Big, big hole off the left side. So Bob Phillips took out the first year man 
Asher Armstrong and sent in the veteran, Ronnie Coleman. And it's Coleman with the score, so the Bengals now lead it 10 to 6. You can see where they went, right towards Leon Gray. They're all pro. Great hole there, Leon. He had no problem going through that hole. I think as big as I am now, I could have run through that one. Wait a second, Dave. Once again, let's, <laughs> let's think about that. Well, I'm only 285 pounds. Ronnie Coleman, his first rushing touchdown since 78. Here is Tony Fritch, who has been perfect this season. Backup quarterback Gifford Nielsen holding. And Fritch puts it right through. A minute and 17. Remaining in this first half. And the Houston Oilers on the board. They now trail 10 to 7. A preceding announcement furnished as a public service by the National Football League. Well, the long drive engineered by Ken Stabler going five minutes and ten seconds, nine plays, 70 yards, one yard run by Coleman, bringing it home. And that line drive bouncer uh, picked up by Cleotha Montgomery. Out across the 15-yard line. So the Cincinnati Bengals now will go to the offense with a minute and 12 remaining in this uh, first half. Darrell Hunt in on the stop of Montgomery. That touchdown run right there by Ronnie Coleman and the success of the Houston Oilers could bring them back defensively. I think defensively they were getting down a little bit because Cincinnati had been controlling the ball. Cincinnati Bengals come in at one up and two down. The last time the Bengals won two straight games this early in the schedule, some four years ago. Keep in mind, this club four and 12 the last two seasons. Jack Thompson with first and 10 at the 16-yard line has Curtis out to the right side. Now well, that's Pete Johnson, who has been a very busy man here in the first half. Curly Culp in on the stop. Timeout is called. First Greg being familiar with these people and bringing them in. The feeling here in Cincinnati is that the team has adjusted as far as Greg's type of coaching. That's Curtis again peeling off. Off the long count. Isaac Curtis going nowhere. J.C. Wilson right in on the play. Both clubs have two timeouts left. With the uh, Double tight end, Emil Harris has come on, so they have four receivers out there, Don Bass, Dan Ross, Isaac Curtis, and Harris. It is a third and two for the Bengals at their 24, 56 seconds left first half. This is Johnson. For first down across the 35-yard line. Pete Johnson has been an all-purpose back here this afternoon. The rush that Jack Thompson got that time was tremendous. I'll tell you, he has really shown me something for a young quarterback. He stayed in there until the last possible second, dumped the ball off to Pete Johnson, who made the first down, accomplished what they wanted to, but he took a heck of a shot here. You can see him right there dropping the ball off and gets a shot. Pete Johnson had a big game last season against Houston. In the earlier game, rushed for 113 yards. Has a first down at the 37-yard line. Another dump-off pass, a hard hit on Charles Alexander by Art Stringer with 40 seconds. Remaining of the half. Ken Kennard is back in at middle guard, replacing Curly Cope. And here is the second and two. misdirection by Charles Alexander and a first down an immediate timeout here out of Washington State third player selected in the 1979 draft He's taken over for the injured Ken Anderson first down at the 44 Isaac Curtis overthrow he had Johnson as the safety valve short and Curtis deep he had Isaac Curtis all the way open. Jack Thompson is upset with himself as he sets back here. He had Isaac Curtis on a turnout pattern of about 17 yards, and he just overthrew him. You can see how wide open Isaac Curtis was there. He must have given a great fake to, to elude the defensive corner like that. 
It is a second and ten for the Bengals at the Houston 44, 28 seconds remaining first half, and Cincinnati leading 10-7. They do not have any timeouts left. And Thompson in trouble, penalty marker down, it is deflected. It was intended way downfield for M.L. Harris, but a penalty marker thrown down. Holding offense number 74. Number 74, the left guard, Glenn Bouchnock, called for the hole. That's an awful tough position for an offensive lineman to be in, knowing that you're going to pass the ball. The defense knows that you're going to pass the ball. And sometimes those little offensive linemen just happen to get their hands a little wider than what they should yeah. be. <laughs> you say that so diplomatically as a one-time defensive tackle. Second and 21, back at the Cincinnati 45. Only 22 seconds left in this first half. Pete Johnson, crowd does not like the call. Robert Brazil on the tackle. Of course, uh, fans would like to see Thompson put it up in the air, but Morris Gregg obviously does not want to play giveaway here in the final seconds. Not having a timeout really hurt them in that situation as they didn't have, even if they completed the pass, they would never have been able to get another play off. So time has run out in this first half. And the Cincinnati Bengals lead the Houston Oilers by the score of 10 to 7. Bum Phillips looking to make it 6 out of 7 against the Cincinnati Bengals. He has had much success in recent years after uh, coming over to Houston. Cleotha Montgomery. Returning for the Cincinnati Bengals across the 25-yard line, Ronnie Coleman, and on special teams, making the stop. Uh, A lot has been said about Hollywood Henderson, their new acquisition this week. You can see him running down the field. He's in his sixth year, and he comes down, gets into the action, and really has a big... A big part of the play right there. He stopped the man, and they're, they've got good field position. They're going to be, I'll tell you, I think he's going to be a good player for the Houston Oilers. I think he's made the transition and realizes that this is the place he wants to play. Well, he says now that as a Houston Oiler, he is Thomas Humble Henderson. In San Francisco, they were calling him Holiday Henderson because he rarely made a practice session. First out at the 27-yard line, and Pete Johnson, who has been a very busy guy, gets the call. Elvin Bethay makes the tackle. It's really important for the Houston Oilers to come out here and to stop the Cincinnati Bengals. If they don't come out and stop them right away, again, it's going to be a long afternoon They because Cincinnati dominated the first half. Two-yard pickup for Johnson, who now has carried 12 times for 51 yards. Off the draw, it's Charles Alexander going nowhere. Robert Brazil, Ted Washington, combining on the stop. Leading ground gainer for Houston in the first half, Rob Carpenter, six carries, only 12 yards. Yes, they do miss a fellow by the name of Earl Campbell, who, of course, helps to set up that uh, passing game. A third and about six out of the 32-yard line. Don Bass, number 84, to the left. Pete Johnson, Charles Alexander on the running backs. Almost intercepted, intended for 86, Steve Kreider. Second-year man out of Lehigh. Potter Hardwick got a piece of it. We've been watching Anthony Munoz, the first-year uh, offensive player for the Cincinnati Bengals. That time, his man didn't get into the play, but he sure bowled over him. Munoz is really known for his strength, and you can see... Jesse Baker just coming right in there and just bowling over him. Now here's Pat McAnally. His third punt of the afternoon. Carl Roaches, the deep man, rookie out of Texas A&M. Good punt by McAnally. Here's Roaches out of the 30 with blockers to the 40. And a penalty marker down as he hits the 45-yard line. Good return by Roaches. A 41-yard punt by McAnally. To foul Clippy, number 39, on the run back. As I was saying, as he turns to run to the play, the wall is set up, and they've got a, just a whale of a shot at him. He never sees the block. Personal foul called on Ashley. 
Hunter Armstrong of Houston. Marv Albert, Dave Rowe from Riverfront in Cincinnati. The Bengals leading Houston 10-7. Crowd urging the Cincinnati defense on. Houston takes over, first down at the 22-yard line. And Stabler to throw on first down, and he completes it. Rob Carpenter coming out of the backfield, stopped by the right inside linebacker. Glenn Cameron, six-year veteran out of the University of Florida. Ball is placed down at the 28-yard line, a six-yard advance. And it is a second and four for Stabler and Houston. Stabler is now 15 out of 18. They have been of the short variety once again as uh, longest completion this afternoon was 23 yards. Renfro is to the right. Johnson left. Carpenter. Stopped by Cameron. And right near the first down marker. We'll have to see where that uh, forward progress was stopped. Looks like it's going to be a third down and one out of yard to go. It's going to bring up an interesting situation. Does Stabler go through the air to try to catch Cincinnati by surprise, or does he continue to, with the ground game? It is a third, and we'll call it one. Outside the 31-yard line, Tim Wilson, Rob Carpenter are the running backs. That's Armstrong peeling, and here's Carpenter on the slant. And it will be very close. There's a great surge there by Cincinnati defense. They are playing good defense, as we've mentioned before. Good flow to the play at the point of attack. I think if he made it, he just barely made it. Ross Browner and Glenn Cameron leading that surge, another outstanding game for Browner, the third-year pro out of Notre Dame. And it is a first down as we check the scoreboard. Now the Rams just clobbering the Giants. It is 28 to nothing in the third quarter. Elvis Peacock just went over from four yards out. First down for Houston at their 32, the trailing 10-7 for early third quarter. Stabler goes sideline. And able to complete, it's Carpenter again. Reggie Williams makes the stop. An interesting thing this time, we were, I was watching Carl Mock, number 55, the center. He's the only player on the Houston Oilers to wear black shoes, and I happened to ask him about it. As you see, you see him here against Wilson Whitley. He's got good protection right there, Stabler does. But I was asking Mock about his black shoes, and he said, I'm not changing until I get out of the league. Yeah. <laughs> of course, the Cincinnati uh, Bengals can talk about the dress code they were fined last week for droopy socks so was Carl Mock for a t-shirt that was hanging out fined by the National Football League second and three Rob Carpenter able to get away on the delay and picks up the first down Lewis Breeden coming up from left quarterback able to make the tackle it is a first down for the Houston Oilers this is an excellent play selection. You see Rob Carpenter's got a he's got a hole right there, and he just turns and you get a good black by uh, block back by Mike Barber there. But an interesting thing right here is that Ross Browner was running step for step with him. He must have some excellent speed. But that was an excellent play selection by Stabler. And it's a 12-yard pickup. There are the uh, black shoes. <laughs> I wore them for 13 years, and he just picked up on it. All right, first down at the 47-yard line. Another dunk pass. And that was thrown in a heavy traffic and is ruled incomplete. A hard hit by the combination of Bright and Williams on Carpenter, who was really jarred. He was really hit on that play. I, he never really had time to get the ball in before he was thrown in traffic. I think Stabler was, well, I know Stabler was under some pressure, so he dumped it off trying to get it to Rob Carpenter on a short one, but Carpenter really never got control of the ball before he was hit. And Rob being attended to by Houston Oilers training staff. He took a tremendous jolt. Rob Carpenter is a difficult guy to tackle, uh, both as a receiver and as a runner. Very, very deceptive. His pass catching ability coming out of the backfield is really an extra added feature for Kenny Stabler. Uh, one interesting thing about Kenny Stabler is that he will continually ask his backs 
what they think they can do and their wide receivers, what they can do against their man. This is a an option that he has as, a, as an experienced quarterback over someone, say, like Jack Thompson. Stable now 16 for 20, 158 yards, second and 10 at the 47. Stabler able to complete once again. It is short of a first down. Johnson fell down after the reception, and Bo Harris uh, able to cover up. Certainly looks like Billy White Shoes Johnson has come back from that severe knee injury, which curtailed his career for two years. He looks very, very good on those in patterns, coming down 8 to 10 yards and cutting on a slant. But by the time Stabler gets back and sets up seven yards deep, Johnson has made the cut and wide open. It took some intensive rehabilitation uh, on the part of White Shoes to make it back after uh, several problems with his knees. It is a third and two at the 45. And a beautiful catch made by Johnson. Ken Riley on the stop. And it is a first down for Houston. That's a picture-perfect play. Billy White Shoes Johnson came off and drove his defensive corner deep, made the out pattern, and as he made the out pattern, the ball was coming right to him. It was just a perfectly timed play. So Houston now in their ball control offense and moving in very methodical fashion. 8.20 remaining in this third quarter. Houston trailing 10-7, but they now have a first down at the 36. the football, but the whistle had long. Bo Harris able to grab the football out of the hands of Stabler, but the whistle had long. That's where the early sack rule really has helped the, the Houston Oilers in that situation. The early sack rule being that the quarterback, when he is in the grabs of a wide receiver, I mean, as a, of a defensive tackle, is immediately down. And you just saw that very impressive Cincinnati uh, defensive record. Here Stabler sets back. You can see the pressure from the outside. They sent about the whole schoolyard there, and they just stole the ball out of his hands, and off he goes. Thank goodness for the early sack rule for the Houston Oilers. And on the sack, loss of 10. It's a second and 20 now for Stabler, looking deep and in trouble, but able to get it off. Just threw it away that time. Just wanted to prevent another uh, sack. Tremendous pressure by the combination of Eddie Edwards and Wilson Whitley really coming off the ball in this situation. They're bringing four down linemen, but the coverage is a thing that has really picked up for the Cincinnati Bengals. They're covering the man. Stabler doesn't have anybody to go to. Extra defensive back Brian Hicks has come on. They'll go on a 4-3. It's a third and 20. Now more changes are being made. Hicks went to the sideline. Incomplete and picked off. Number 53, Bo Harris. Off the arm of Ronnie Coleman. So two critical turnovers conserving Coleman, but a penalty marker is thrown down. But again, that flag's in a bad area. It's in the offensive holding area. No, wait a minute. It's going against Cincinnati. Wait for the call from the referee, Ben Greif. Le Leon Gray was so excited, he ran over and picked up the flag for the referee. Yeah. He was happy about that one. Illegal use of the hands on number 57 on the defense. That's an automatic first down. There he is, Richie Williams. Five-year man out of Dartmouth. Outside linebacker on the right who had an outstanding first half, but a critical penalty right here, so that eliminates uh, the interception. And it's an automatic first down at the 41-yard line. As you can hear, the crowd does not like the call. Tim Wilson and the fullback picks up yardage on the play. Tripped up by the combination of LeClaire and Cameron, the inside linebackers. It's a four-yard advance, second and six for Houston. At 
at the 37-yard line. Well, that a big, big break. The penalty caught on Reggie Williams. Ronnie Coleman had fumbled in the first half, leading to the field goal by Ian Santa to give the Bengals a 10-7 lead. That is the tight end, Mike Bobber, only his second reception of the day, and he's picked up the first down, chased out by the right cornerback, Ken Riley. Of course, in Oakland, as you are well aware, Dave, Ken Stabler had his favorite target in tight end, uh, David Casper. Well, Mike Barber here is one of the highly respected tight ends in professional football. It was a great play right there. He did, it was actually, a, it looked like a shield play. When I say a shield play, one man, the wide receiver, Billy Johnson, runs his man deep. Barber comes underneath. It's a 14-yard pass play. Dan Pastorini would not throw to Mike Bobber as frequently as Stabler has. Now Stabler going for run throw, and it's battled away. Lewis Breeden, number 34, able to break it up. Cincinnati is definitely trying to disrupt Kenny Stabler now. They're, they're bringing a lot of men up in the line, giving them a lot of different looks on defense, not knowing who's going to come after him. Here we see Mike Renfro on a crossing pattern going towards the post. He's open, but the ball is awful high. Just went over his head. It was just a pass that I guess he just didn't have enough time to throw. It'll be a second and ten for Houston. At the Cincinnati 23-yard line. 6.49 left, third quarter. The Bengals lead at 10-7. That's Renfro in motion. White shoes Johnson inside the 20. Wilson Whitley. The nose tackle over to make the play. Billy Johnson took a good shot on that ball, which, again, will build his confidence with the prior knee problems that he has had. The Stabler's really doing a good job of mixing up his plays right now, trying again to keep Cincinnati off guard. They're in three down, four down position on the 17-yard line. Looks like they're going to come out of this with something. They're trying to at least get three. They don't want to make the mistake right now and lose it. Picked up six on the Johnson reception. It is a third and four for Houston. They go slot left. That's Renfro in the slot. Here's Tim Wilson. Gets inside the 15-yard line. Well, if Carl Mock is any indication, they have it. <laughs> because I just saw Carl point for a first down. It was an interesting call right there to run a, uh, run the ball in that territory. Jim LeClaire, inside linebacker out of North Dakota. Bo Harris combined to make the stop. It is very close to a first down. That may be why Carl Mock is an offensive center and not a referee because they're calling it fourth down. It is a fourth down play upcoming and a timeout called by Houston. Let's see what Bum Phillips does here. The bubble talk it over with Ken Stabler and we'll be right back with Cincinnati leading Houston 10 to 7. Well, the Houston Oilers have decided to go for it. Andrew Armstrong has checked in, so they'll go full house backfield. Bum Phillips. Deciding to go for the seven. We'll keep an eye out. Bump Phillips on the sideline. It is a fourth down and entries. Big play right here. It's Rob Carpenter. And we'll have to wait and see. Jim LeClaire was able to close it up. Bengal players are pointing that they take over. But let's see how they call it. So Bob Phillips decided to go for it rather than go for the field goal, and uh, they will measure. What could have figured into the play is that the Houston Oilers on the last play wanted the measurement and had to call timeout rather than take the five-yard law penalty for delay a game. Now they're going to get the now they're going to get the measurement, and it's going for Cincinnati. First down. So again, that young defense rises up. 
So the Cincinnati Bengals able to hold off the Houston Autos on this play right here. Here we'll see Jim LeClaire just come up and do a tremendous job of filling and dropping Rob Carpenter shy. Jim LeClaire has pulled the gentleman on and off the field. So a timeout is called and we'll be back with the Bengal offense in a moment. All right, Dave, how about that Cincinnati uh, defensive unit? They have risen back and forth. Hank Buller has come in there and just done a job. We've talked about him before, but they certainly rose up on occasion. Stopped the powerful Houston Oilers on third and one. Here's Charles Alexander getting outside and picking up nine on the play. Greg Bingham. Inside linebacker on the right, making the stop. Well, that's one way to get uh, your club out of difficulty. They were... First and ten at the 13-yard line. If the Houston Oilers can hold them down in this distance, they'll, they'll be able to get the ball back at midfield. But with Charles Alexander getting around the outside like that, it puts an awful lot more pressure because it brings up a second and one situation. And Jack Thompson today is 10 for 15, 98 yards. Second and one off the nine-yard run by Alexander. That's Pat McAnally, the punter, in as a wide receiver going in motion. The first down picked up by Pete Johnson. Pete Johnson in his fifth year out of Ohio State. Six feet, 250, and has looked very powerful right throughout. Detroit leading Minnesota, 10-7. In the third quarter, field goal by Ed Murray from 36 yards out, giving the Lions the lead. And Green Bay and Dallas a tied at seven. Bart Starr very much on the line. Either today or next week, all kinds of rumors uh, coming uh, by way of Green Bay that the uh, star hit the, at the end of his rope. That time, Johnson was stopped back behind the uh, line of scrimmage. Robert Brazil in to make the stop. Well, a quick lineup uh, by the Bengals, second and 11. At the 24 for Jack Thompson. And Thompson going for McAnally. Overthrows. McAnally caught only one pass all of last year. Ted Washington was covering on the play. And here in the third quarter, Forrest Gregg has inserted uh, McAnally as a wide receiver. Well, I think he's primarily used as a punter. But an interesting thing here is that Jack Thompson is calling two plays back-to-back, -back, which is trying to, again, disrupt the Houston Oilers defense from being able to call their quick signals. Usually they'll go in and the defensive concept is called in three segments, one for the line, second part for the linebackers, third for the secondary. And they're trying to, to muddle up that a little bit by, by calling two quick plays back-to-back. -back. Thompson has third at 11, and that time confusion on the other side of the line. And penalty markers are down. I'm told that Isaac Curtis suffered a bruised back. And that is the reason that we are seeing Pat McAnally as a wide receiver. The other backup for receivers are Mike Levenseller and Steve Kreider, who we have seen just briefly. Illegal procedure center. Well, that's what you call a half a snap. <laughs> <laughs> it's indecision. The center, Blair Bush, three-year man out of the University of Washington. On that call, so it is a third and 15. And Thompson runs out of the pocket to the 30. Down he goes. He saw a lot of blue shirts and decided that's about it. He's already learned the famous hook slide for quarterbacks, as was evidenced on that play. Been watching the matchup between Anthony Munoz and Jesse Baker. Boy, I tell you, they are really playing hard football. They're two excellent football players. Munoz came in with the history of the bad knees, and he's really played well. And Jesse Baker, of course, the outstanding star. There's Isaac Curtis, who is sitting out now with that bad back. Carl Roaches awaiting the punt from McAnally. Line drive and short. Roaches to the 40. And that will be it. Good coverage. By the Cincinnati Bengals. Ron Sunkins and Brian Hicks combining a 39 yard punt by McAnally, and we'll be back with the Houston Oilers offense in a moment. 
Right here, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KPRC-TV, Channel 2, Houston. Two minutes, 51 seconds left, third quarter. Houston takes over at their 43-yard line. First and 10. Here's Stabler going sideline and completing for the tight end. Mike Bobber out at the 48-yard line. And a penalty marker thrown down. Could have been a late hit. Ken Riley making the stop. Reggie Williams there, number 57, also uh, in on the play. I think the penalty was on Reggie Williams. Coming in late, uh, piled on Mike Barber. It's a costly penalty as it's going to put them in their, in their own territory trying to defend. Foul piling on, number 57. First down. You can see the pass here to Barber. He looks as if he's going down, and he is down, and Reggie Williams just comes in and piles Ooh. on. That's a very foolish penalty in a, in a situation like that. Piling on penalty on Williams. And it's a first and ten for Houston at the Cincinnati 37. Stabler had lots of time and able to complete. Once again, it's Mike Barber who has become the primary receiver here in the second half. Glenn Cameron, right inside linebacker, making the stop. And some words between some of the Bengals and Oilers and things getting testy out there now. Well, an awful lot of pressure is being put on the Cincinnati Bengals. Twice they've been down here. Last time they answered the call, but this time they're back on a 25-yard line. Stabler's got the team under control. But they certainly have used also, used Mike Barber an awful lot more than what they did in the first half. 12-yard completion for Stabler. Now Renfro is to the left and Johnson right. Barber is tight. First down at the Bengal 25-yard line. Stabler looking and completes to Renfro. Ken Riley making the stop and Mike Renfro has been a favorite receiver of Stabler today. It's a seven-yard pickup. It'll be a second and three at the 18-yard line, a minute and a half remaining in this third quarter. Cincinnati leading 10-7, all the scoring in the first half. 12-yard pass play, Jack Thompson to Don Bass. 26-yard field goal by Ian Sutter. One-yard plunge by Ronnie Coleman of Houston. And that has been it. On the sweep, Rob Carpenter, not able to make the turn. That was diagnosed beautifully by number 27, Brian Hicks. Rookie safety man out of McNeese State. McNeese State is right. He certainly came up and made good support on that. Came up and caught him for a little bit of a loss. It's going to bring up another Kenny Stabler situation. Third down and two. Does he go for the run? If he had Earl Campbell, I guarantee you he'd be thinking an awful lot more of it. And Earl Campbell continues to sit it out as you look at head coach Forrest Gregg of the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. I'm sure he's not too unhappy about uh, Campbell sitting out. We could still see Campbell later on. That remains to be seen. Off the swing, Carpenter has the first down and some more. Run out of bounds by Breeden and Riley. We have continually seen Kenny Stabler fill the zone to his left. He's a left-handed quarterback, of course, but we've continually seen him run off Ken Riley deep and come underneath with, with patterns, whether it be to Barber or Carpenter, coming out on the left side into that zone. Obviously, Houston sees a weakness there on the Cincinnati Bengal defense. Well, the Pittsburgh Steelers having an easy time with the Chicago Bears. 31-3, to bouncing back to the loss against Cincinnati. And New Orleans leading Miami, 16 to nothing. Stabler again had time, able to complete. Tim Wilson down to the five-yard line. Brian Hicks makes the stop and Stabler is now picking that secondary apart all short stuff but getting the job done shows that Tim Wilson is not only a, an excellent ball carrier with a five yard uh, per carry average but he also has good hands coming out of the backfield and another added dimension and that is the end of the third quarter so at the end of three the score remains Cincinnati 10 and Houston 7 we'll be right back after these messages Welcome you back to Riverfront Stadium, Cincinnati, Ohio. This is Marv Albert with Dave Rowe as we get set for the start of play in the fourth quarter. Our statistics here show that the 
Houston Oilers have not been able to run, but are going with the arm of Kenny Stabler. And it is a second down and three at the four-yard line for Houston. The Oilers trailing by the score of 10-7 of the crowd urging this Cincinnati defensive unit on. There go full house backfield. And Stabler will throw off the run and back trouble. Number 72, Mike St. Clair, a recent addition to the squad, and number 67, Gary Burley on the stop. Tim Wilson and Mike Barber had a mix-up in their pass pattern that time as they both came off, bumped into each other, and fouled up uh, Kenny Stabler with the timing of the pass play. So it will be a third down and 12 back at the 13-yard line. Again, the Cincinnati defense has rose up to the occasion again and stopped the Houston Oilers. Stabler now 25 for 31, 234 yards. Wilson and Carpenter, the running back. This is Tim Wilson battling his way to the 10. Eddie Edwards, Glenn Cameron making the tackle. And so we will see Tony Fritch come on for the first time to try and tie this game. And Fritch has had another magnificent season, four for four. In field goal attempts, he's hit from 31, 25, 29, and 17. Last year, a sizzling 21 out of 25. A 27-yard attempt upcoming. Cliff Parsley holding. Fritsch looking to tie it at 10. And he does. So 13 minutes and 41 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. And the Oilers have come from behind. We're now tied at 10. Thomas, as he says, humble. Anderson, who has seen uh, some action today on special teams. As Tony Fritsch gets set to kick off. We're tied at 10. 27-yard field goal by Fritsch to even it up. Deep man is Cleotha Montgomery, the rookie out of Abilene Christian. And it's taken by the up man, Brian Hicks. And Hicks gets it to the 25, had some difficulty with it. Brian Hicks, a fifth-round draft pick out of McNeese State. Providing the Cincinnati Bengals with a first down at the 25-yard line. Jack Thompson, the quarterback. Charles Alexander, Pete Johnson, the running backs. During the course of that last Houston series, we saw Ken Anderson warming up on the sideline. Don Bass out to the left. Steve Kreider to the right. Isaac Curtis uh, on the sideline because of a uh, back injury. Thompson jumping it off. This is Ross, the tight end. Good low tackle out at the 32-yard line by Ted Washington as Ross was looking upfield for that first down marker. It certainly was. As he come off the line, he automatically got the ball quickly and thought he had the speed to go around, but just an excellent tackle. But it's going to bring up a second down and two or three, then it's an ideal situation for Jack Thompson now. They do mark it at second and three. M.L. Harris has replaced Dan Ross at tight end. That's Harris 83. 12 minutes, 50 seconds left, fourth quarter. Bengals and the Oilers tied at 10 as Pete Johnson was stopped going right side of the line. Curly Culp is just a perennial all-pro is just playing excellent football. The 3-4 was really designed and he was the first nose tackle to play it. He stands up, Blair Bush, right on the play, right to the right side of the play and just makes the tackle. That's just that's just a superb football play. And he is he is one of the main reasons why the 34 defense has become so successful throughout the National Football League. You like it, Dave? I really enjoyed it while I played it. It, it was a defense that's designed for players like Curly Colt and myself. <laughs> now it's a third and one for Cincinnati at their 34-yard line. Alexander! They have the good second effort. We'll have to wait. Looked like he was stopped short and then able to surge forward. 
And uh, they will measure. There again, though, Curly Culp got great penetration. They tried to double-team him to get the depth to get him out of there, but you can watch him come off the ball stand and Blair Bush straight up. Can't say anything about that. They bring Pete Johnson in there to try and double him, but of course it allows the linebackers to come up underneath. But anytime you're taking two men, somebody's free, and on that play it was. The officials first said, let's measure, and then they said, no, short of the mark as they placed the ball down, so Cincinnati will have to punt away. Our Roaches awaiting the punt from Pat McAnally from his 20-yard line. Excellent hang time. And will not allow a run back. And the Houston Oilers will take over. So McAnally not allowing the return. We have 11 minutes, 4 seconds remaining. Fourth quarter will be back after these words. We want to make you smile. Welcome back. I see you brought a friend. My boy. Well, the veteran Ken Anderson continues to warm up on the sideline. We perhaps will see a change later on. Jack Thompson had a great first half, not able to move the club here in the uh, second half. Here's Stabler first and 10, and again he goes to Wilson. Tim Wilson out to the 43. Mike White, second-year man out of Albany State, making the stop. With 11 minutes left in the game, or less than 11 minutes of the game, this is where Kenny Stabler is the master. He comes out of here, he plays ball control, he drops off there, picks up seven or eight yards, puts him in an ideal situation, second down and two or three, he can run or pass. He can. This is the type of game that the, the Houston Oilers want to play right now, ball control. And he has a second and three now at the 42. McAnally with a 31-yard punt, got lots of hang time, but uh, no return on it. The draw. Just a short pickup of anything with Bo Harris all over Rob Carpenter. Reggie Williams also in on the tackle. Kenny Stable now 28 for 32 for 241 yards, coming in at a completion record of 71 percent. He had hit his last eight last week against the Baltimore Colts and was 41 for 49 coming into today. Now you know why I consider Kenny Stabler the finest quarterback in professional football. It is a third and one for Houston. And penalty marker down. Once again, Bob Phillips going with the extra running back at Andrew Armstrong. And it is a procedure penalty. Armstrong was peeling off. And uh, let's see the reason behind that uh, call. Well, Bob Young just went out of the game. Ball start, offense. Bob Young just went out of the game, and, and David Carter came in to replace him. Coming in on a situation like that, third down and one, you're really keyed, and evidently he moved off sides. Moved prior to the snap. It'll be a third and six. Stabler goes sideline, nearly intercepted. Intended for Billy Johnson, who grabbed hold of Ken Riley after the ball made contact with Riley. Kenny Stabler was under an awful lot of pressure that time. He had a man coming right down on him. You can see him here as he takes the snap and sets back. He's very conscious of this linebacker coming right in on him. Billy Johnson here does a great play also because he dives in merely trying to break up the ball. He was not trying to, to get an interception. But there's a wily old veteran there, Ken Riley, 12 years from Florida A&M. Cliff Parsley back at his 25-yard line. And this is Cleotha Montgomery. And a boomer by Parsley. Montgomery has the back pedal out to the 15. Across the 20. So Cleotha Montgomery fielding that long punt by Parsley, a 54-yarder. And Ken Anderson will take over for the Cincinnati Bengals when we return following this timeout. It appeared that Forrest Gregg was about to insert Ken Anderson, but it is Jack Thompson who remains in for the Cincinnati Bengals as the Bengals take over first and 10 at the 20-yard line. 9-21. Remaining fourth quarter, and 
the Bengals and Oilers are tied at 10. And Thompson to throw on first down. Dumps it off. Pete Johnson. A check of the scoreboard. Buffalo now leading Oakland 24-7. Ferguson able to complete to Cripps' 21-yard pass play to get it. Uh, the Bills on top. Dallas over Green Bay 14-7 at halftime. Robert Newhouse took it in from one yard out on the Cowboys with the lead over the 1-2 Green Bay Packers. As you can see, a Houston player, it's left cornerback J.C. Wilson shaken up, and as they attend to him, will break for these words. Well, Carter Hardwick has come on, and left cornerback replacing J.C. Wilson. Second and one at the 29, they go double tight end. The lone deep back is Pete Johnson. And Jack Thompson will put it up in big trouble. Jack Thompson now going to run for the first down, and he's got it. It appeared that they had him pinned. Elvin Buffet had a shot. Could not get to him. And Thompson runs for the first down. Jack Thompson was under extreme pressure there, as you said, from, from several of the Houston Oilers. But Don, uh, excuse me, Don Bass, number 84, was wide open, but Thompson just never got a chance to get the ball to him. You can see him there just standing wide open, just wanting the ball. But actually, Thompson did a wise thing by going for the first down. He was right on the line. He had a chance to get the first down. And of course, he did. Picked up five yards on the play. It's a first down at the 34. And uh, another injured Houston player a moment ago, J.C. Wilson, was shaken up. Replaced at corner by Carter Hardwick. Looks to be Greg Bingham. So, Bum Phillips concerned as Bingham walks off the field with some help. Of course, as you know, Marv, injuries play a big role in professional football. The Houston Oilers, they are playing without uh, Earl Campbell, as they are also without Kenny Burrow, their deep threat. And Isaac Curtis out of the lineup here in the second half because of a bruised back. Ted Thompson has come on, replacing Greg Bingham, right inside linebacker. Thompson, a six-year man out of Southern Methodist. The Bengals first down at their 34, 8.20 left fourth quarter, and we're tied at 10. Swing pass, Johnson able to catch it. He actually tripped up, put himself down, and that is pushed back the other way. Boy, is that great concentration. Pete Johnson coming out of the backfield actually tripped over. The, it looked like he tripped over the baseball, uh, the uh, pitcher's mound there where they make the artificial surface because this is a baseball field, football field. But you can see the concentration that he has. But being as big as he is, by the time he got up, they were right on top of him. But what a concentration to look that ball in. That is not a play we will find in the uh, Cincinnati uh, playbook next week. <laughs> Here's Thompson to throw. Incomplete intended for Steve Kreider. Kreider, the second-year man out of Lehigh, a sixth-round draft pick last year. And it will be a third and ten out of the 34-yard line. The clock again starts to play an important part as we're down under eight minutes, seven and a half minutes, because the Cincinnati Bengals have got to drive. They know that they're going to have to give up the ball unless they get 10 yards on this play. And the old wily Ken Stabler is going to come in there. The guy who I rode his arm to the Super Bowl, so I like him. Thompson is now 12 for 19. At a timeout has been called by the Bengals, so they want to talk things over. Thursday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, right here on NBC, it's Games People Play. Our producer today, Mike Weissman, our director, Ted Nathanson. We have seven and a half left in this fourth quarter. The Cincinnati Bengals jumping to a 10-0 lead. Midway through the uh, first half, a 12-yard pass play. Thompson to Don Bass. The Bass's third touchdown of the season. Uh, fumble by Ron Coleman of Houston following a reception. Fumble 
recovered by Jim LeClaire, leading to a 26-yard field goal by Ian Saunter. Good drive led by Stabler, concluding with Coleman taking it in from one. So it was 10-7 at halftime, and a 27-yard field goal by Tony Fritz early in the fourth quarter, tying it at 10. Third and 10 for the throw-in, Simone, who was on the run and in trouble. Able to get it off, and it is ruled incomplete. Dan Ross, the intended receiver. And they had the wraps around Ross. Here we see Jack Tatum, number 28, of course, from the Oakland Raiders. My heydays. You can see him reacting to the play right there, and he actually strips the man of the ball. So it was actually a good play. Jack Ross. Tatum, of course, a funny story on Jack Tatum was that he was seen on the plane sleeping, and you don't want to wake up Jack Tatum. And the Houston Oilers decided they were going to wake up everybody on the plane. Of course, when they picked the blanket off Jack Tatum, they said, oh, excuse me, Jack, go back to sleep. In other words, they don't want to mess with uh, Jack Tatum. That is a uh, weekly ritual after a Houston victory on the road where a couple of guys uh, go around waking people up as they try to catch some Z's. Pat McAnally with a boomer. Carl Rochus to the 15, 20. Stumbles ahead, out to the 40, 45, cuts back. Down to the 40, look out! Rochus down to the 25, and down he goes! Around the 20. Sensational run back, Nathan Poole. A backup running back was able to chase him down. A big, big play for the Houston Oilers. And what a cutback move by Roaches to spring it loose. You see Roaches take the ball. He's got a wall out in front of him here. He gets behind the wall right there, makes a couple, breaks a couple plays, stays in bounds. You can see him high stepping there, and he's off to the races. Here you see he'll cut back, makes a good choice, and he's off. And what an impressive run down here by number 35, Nathan Poole, second year to catch him because he's a speed burner. 54-yard punt, 68-yard return. That's Tim Wilson. Tough man to bring down, gets inside the 15-yard line. Jim LeClaire making the tackle. So the 68-yard punt return by Carl Roaches, the rookie out of Texas A&M. Last year, Bum Phillips saw a real need in this department. The punt return, their longest punt return last year was 25 yards. So what an addition Roaches makes to their, to their special teams. It's a second and five for the Oilers. 6.20 left, fourth quarter, tied at 10. A bullet thrown behind Billy Johnson. Talking about the punt kickoff effort of the Houston Oilers since the injury suffered by Billy Johnson. They have been searching, and Bum Phillips does not want to use Johnson in that department because uh, that's be tough for the little guy to take that uh, that kind of pounder. That. Cleveland leading Tampa Bay 24-13 of the second quarter. Obviously, Billy Johnson's quite a threat as a wide receiver. Not to say that uh, Roaches is not a valuable player to the Houston Oilers, but Billy Johnson has sustained injuries, so they want to try to protect him in that area. Renfro right, Johnson left. Third and five, and on the draw, short of a first down, Ronnie Coleman. Stopped by Ross Browner. Continually, Cincinnati has called upon their defense, and they've answered the call each time as they stop him here on a fourth down and one. And one of the Bengal players is hurt. It is linebacker Jim LeClaire, who has been a key man right throughout this afternoon. He's had himself an excellent game. He made two great stops on short yardage and recovered a pen, uh, fumble, which led to their 10-point uh, lead. So once again, it is Tony Fritsch coming on. Coming up next here on NBC, the second game of our doubleheader, where most of you will see the Seahawks of Seattle take on the Washington Redskins, plus other regional games. So stay tuned right where you are. From the 19, a 29-yard field goal. Fritsch hit earlier from 27. He's 5 for 5 on the season. 
And Tony Fritz has done it again. A 29-yard field goal set up by the 68-yard punt return by Carl Rochus. And Houston leads for the first time today, 13 to 10. There's the story, 5.33 left fourth quarter as Tony Fritsch gets set to kick off following his 29-yard field goal. He is hit from 29 and from 27. There's Cleotha Montgomery awaiting the kick. And Fritsch again kicks short as Brian Hicks, one of the up men, out near the 30-yard line. So that's the second return by Hicks. Cincinnati was in this similar position last week, Marv versus the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they came back to win that game under the direction of Jack Thompson, so evidently they have a lot of confidence under Jack Thompson. The Detroit Lions leading the Minnesota Vikings 17 to 7 in the fourth quarter. St. Louis in a surprise, leading the Philadelphia Eagles 10-7. Philly, of course, coming off a Monday night game, so that uh, may be taking its toll. There's Charles Alexander. Out across the 30, a short pickup. Greg Bingham, who obviously is all right after he was shaken up on the last defensive series and on the tackle. Two-yard advance by Alexander. It is a second and eight at the 32. Five minutes remaining in this fourth quarter. And Houston down once by the count of 10-0, now leading it 13-10. Earl Campbell has sat out right throughout. Going in, they said he would be a question mark because of a pulled groin. Last week, carried only seven times for 11 yards, then went to the sidelines. And Bun Phillips, looking to do it without him today, just wants to rest him. Here's Alexander on the sweep. Across the 35. Charles Alexander, who comes off a disappointing rookie year, has been showing signs of coming on. Out of Galveston, Texas. Stopped by Andy Durris, the defensive left end. Well, he certainly knows how to carry the ball, Charles Alexander. At LSU, he carried the ball an awful lot of times. Picked up five on the play. And it's a third and three. Doris, Colt, Buffet up front. Brazil, Bingham, Springer, Washington are the linebackers. Now Kennard is in for Colt, but that'll guard. Third and three, the call. And Thompson will put it up. Penalty marker is down. Thompson overthrows Alexander out at midfield. That was an obvious holding penalty against the Houston Oilers. They like to tackle uh, Don, excuse me, not Don Bass, but uh, it was Don Bass as he come off the line. Crowd reacting to the preliminary signal by the referee, Ben Dreith. Uh, hey, that was just a blatant call. He really... Defense holding number 32. That's an automatic first down. It's the strong safety, Vernon Perry. Called for the hold, so the Bengals get a break. Automatic first down at the 42-yard line. Running backs, Charles Alexander, Pete Johnson. And it's Johnson to the 46. Pick up a four. It'll be a second and six. Ted Washington, number 59, making the stop. Pete Johnson just continually continues to impress me with the size and the running ability. He's come out of the backfield. He's been an all-purpose back today, catching a lot of passes. He's probably been the main force behind the Cincinnati D, uh, offense today. 16 carries, 60 yards for Johnson. Second and six for the Bengals. It's Johnson again, out to the field. Short of a first down, it'll set up a third and two. The clock running now, just under three minutes left in this fourth quarter. Houston leading it by the score of 13 to 10. As you look at Ian Sunter, the placement specialist for the Bengals. Detroit over Minnesota now in the fourth quarter, 24 to 7. New Orleans. In a surprise, leading Miami 16-7. That Miami quarterback situation is still up for grabs. There's Johnson. And 
uh, he is short. Johnson, who has been doing it all day that time, not able to pick it up. Mike Stensrud with a big stop. I think when he went to the well one time too many. The crowd urging the Bengals to go for it. As you look at the uh, <laughs> sideline theatrics, Nathan Poole just came on to replace Pete Johnson. It is a fourth and one. And here is the two-minute warning. So now the Bengals will have some more time to talk things over. Two minutes left, fourth quarter. It is Houston by three, 13 to 10. Here is the key play of the game coming up. The Cincinnati Bengals trailing the Houston Oilers, 13 to 10. And they have a fourth and about one. At midfield, as you look at quarterback Jack Thompson, two minutes remaining, fourth quarter. Thompson has just talked it over with head coach Forrest Gregg. And Pete Johnson returns to the lineup, uh, replacing Nathan Poole. So the two-minute warning timeout provided Johnson with a respite. Johnson and Alexander are the running backs. Now the Cincinnati crowd urging their Bengals on. It is Alexander, and he has picked up the first down. Alexander going the right side to pick up a very important first down with time running down. J.C. Wilson, the left quarterback, covering up on the play. Jack Thompson here really fouls up the uh, Houston Oilers. They thought they would go towards Ant uh, Anthony Munoz, but he fouled him up and came back to the weak side. Got a, uh, got a hole there and went on through and picked up the first down. A really important first down. Cincinnati, two timeouts left. Houston has three. 124 left fourth quarter. First down at the Houston 47. And Thompson goes for the home run. Deep down, field, but overthrow. Intended for Don Bass. So Jack Thompson looking to put six up right there. Jack Thompson here really laid it out for Don Bass. You can see the effort Don Bass and Greg Stemmerk running stride for stride. Look at this effort by Don Bass to go after the ball. They really want to play for Jack Thompson and Forrest Gregg. Now Pat McAnally has come in as a wide receiver replacing Steve Kreider. Second and 10 for Cincinnati at the Houston 47. Thompson, as you see, 13 for 21. Oilers lead it by three, 13 to 10. Now swing pass, incomplete intended for Pete Johnson. That pass was thrown off the mark. And he had the linebacker, Brazil, right in the line of sight. So it is a third and 10 at the 47. Again, they've continually gone to Pete Johnson. And uh, Robert Brazil saw him coming out of backfield and just stayed with him. Only one minute and nine seconds left in the fourth quarter. Ian Sunter obviously thinking it over right here. He had a big one in the final minutes last Sunday to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Thompson goes sideline and it is picked off. Picked off by the Houston Oilers. M.L. Harris, the intended receiver, Jack Tatum with the intercept. And the Oilers with a minute one left in the fourth quarter have regained possession. That's one of the great things that Jack Tatum can do as a nickel back. He's the extra back back there playing the eyes of the quarterback. He merely drops back, plays center field, sees where Jack Thompson is looking and plays that way. That time he played just excellent, came up, took the ball, and could ice it. And Jack Thompson... Very unhappy young man as he tried to drill it through a crowd along the uh, near side. Jack Tatum coming up with his third intercept of the season, and he has been employed primarily as a nickel back. Nine-year veteran out of Ohio State. Pound for pound still the toughest hitter in the National Football League. What about Ken Anderson, the veteran, talking with the second-year man? Jack Thompson, 
as the Oilers take over first and ten at their 35 yard line they lead it 13 to 10 and they just want to kill off the final minute one Ben Stabler full house backfield and a quick timeout being called for by Cincinnati Oh, Harris uh, just grabbing Rob Carpenter. That's a final. Buffalo Bills have done it. Defeating your old ball club, Dave, the Oakland Raiders. 24 to 7. What do you think about Oakland? Buffalo certainly looks like they're for real. I think Oakland is in the transition period of coming from the older players to the younger players, but Buffalo has really been impressive this year. The rookie Cripps, Joe Ferguson, a Excellent quarterback. I think after the first couple games, no one really thought that Buffalo was that good, but they're getting more and more credibility every week. Ben Stabler with uh, another extraordinary day, 28 for 34, 241 yards. Oilers again just look to kill the clock, and the final timeout being utilized now by Cincinnati. The Bengals looking to strip the football, looking to do whatever they can, and uh, of course uh, take a a miraculous uh, turn right here. That's a very frustrating position to be in. You know the clock is running out. You're using your timeouts. And all you want to do is get the ball back, give your offense a little chance, but it doesn't look very good. Like you said, unless there's one of those Philadelphia Eagle snaps uh, against the New York Giants. As we have touched upon uh, throughout the telecast, of course, from the Houston point of view, they are doing it today without Earl Campbell, so Bum Phillips able to give Campbell a complete day of rest. <laughs> and uh, Ralph uh, Carpenter was looking for some contact. There were no uh, Cincinnati players looking to uh, cover up on him. Penalty markers all over the field, and uh, we have some temper tantrums on both sides of the line. A frustrating day for the Bengals, who played very well, and yet here they are faced with 40 seconds remaining and a, a difficult uh, three-point defeat. That's very surprising, Leon Gray being in there uh, in an argument like that because he's a very mild-mannered person and uh, very, very well-liked, very popular. But as I said, it is a frustrating position to be in. One thing it does do, though, is stop the clock. You can see Bum Phillips there wanting the clock to run. Offsetting uh, penalties, personal fouls assessed on both the uh, Oilers and the Bengals. The clock has stopped with 40 seconds remaining, and uh, Bum wants that clock to show some movement, and he is in a rage right now. In fact, uh, Phillips at the far side on the field, which is a no-no. looking to taunt Phillips who is just red hot as you can see timeout being indicated by Bump and uh, the reason for that timeout he wants to talk with the officials I think he wants to take, make sure that he gets his entire punt team in there because definitely Cincinnati is going to be coming at it but also he wants to make sure that his punter gets a good punt because all he needs is one good play right here, a good return, and they're back in field goal position. So Cincinnati basically has done what they wanted to do. They've, they're going to get the ball back for their offense. Even though they're not going to have much time, a pass or two could make a big difference. That personal foul really hurt the Houston Oilers in this situation. The back judge, Stan Javi, try to settle uh, Phillips down. There's uh, referee Ben Drive. Bum is still upset because he felt uh, the clock should have started. I know he's upset now. I just saw him take off his hat. <laughs> well, we have an opportunity, thanks to our statisticians, Bill Schwarber and Mike Leonard, our uh, statistician, Dr. John Drought. Always good to have a doctor here, Dave, in case you get physical. Yeah, after playing the last two years without my helmet, sometimes that does happen. But that penalty really is a big play in this game. What does Cincinnati do? Do they come out and block the ball, or do they try to get the return? If it was me, I'd try to get my return to get the ball back into three-down territory. All right, Cleotha Montgomery is back. 
Cliff Parsley will punt from his six. We have 40 seconds left fourth quarter. He might take a safety. <laughs> no, he's not going the Don Shula route. Good hang time. Montgomery to the 40. Now that's it. Keep in mind the Bengals do not have any timeouts. So we assume that uh, Jack Thompson has called off uh, several plays right here. We'll look to go sideline and stop the clock. 47-yard punt and a beauty by Parsley. They've got to get down to the 30-yard line to get into Ian Sunder's uh, range. Obviously, they're going to have to go to a sideline pattern because they don't have timeout, as you said, Marv. Marv Albert, Dave Rowe from Riverfront in Cincinnati. We have 29 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Bengals take over in a last desperation situation. The Oilers lead it 13 to 10. Bengals with Jack Thompson at quarterback going right throughout. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. And Thompson will put it up. Goes sideline, and he's got Kreider. He was in bounds. A great catch by Steve Kreider, second-year man out of Lehigh. And that play took only seven seconds. So Jack Tatum beaten by Kreider moments ago was Tatum intercepting Thompson. And now a first down for Cincinnati at the Houston 37. We can see from ground level here that Jack Thompson is really confident in that pocket. He drops the ball in there, and he must have been an engineer because he was right on the sideline, made a touchdown, right? I mean, made a tiptoe to catch right on the sideline. Certainly got him in, certainly got him in range. Number 19 is Ian Sumter, and he may be called upon very shortly. 22-yard pass play between Thompson and Kreider. And here's Thompson again on first down, running out of the pocket. He's going to try to get out of bounds. No, he cannot. He went to the center of the field. And the clock is running. That is an error by Jack Thompson. The clock running. Seven seconds now. They try to line up. And now the clock was stopped with five seconds. Jack Thompson should have gone to the near side. Should have gone out of bounds. He's got to get the ball out of bounds right now. He's got to take the snap, take the snap, and throw the ball down to kill the clock to get a shot at. They've got four seconds. Three, and two, one. Even if he one. does, Ian Sutter will have quite a, a task. He does fire. It's batted away. The scoreboard shows no time. Let's wait for the official announcement. Double zero on the scoreboard. There's the gun, and that's it. So they are not able to get the field goal kicker, Ian Sunter, in. A critical error by Jack Thompson as the Houston Oilers have defeated the Cincinnati Bengals 13-10 to with the game winner, a 29-yard field goal by Tony Fritsch, his second field goal of the afternoon. So Bum Phillips has to breathe a sigh of relief to pull this one out. Houston goes three up and one down. A tough loss for Cincinnati. They are now one and three. From Riverfront Stadium, Cincinnati, Ohio, this is Marv Albert along with Dave Rowe. Now let's go to NFL Lady in New York. Here is Brian.